This video is brought to you by Club Jame Co. Visit clubjameco.com for more electronics kits and projects. I wonder what it is. Let's look over the box first. Comes in nice tape with their logo on it and everything, and everything was shipped nicely. So, we're gonna cut along here, and along here, and it should pop right open. I wonder what it could be. Well, there's some nice paper there. Make sure that nothing gets too damaged. Oh, so this is a kit from Club Jane Co. and it comes in this nice enclosure here. Let's open it up and see what's inside. Maybe I wonder what this could be. Pretty heavy. That's the heaviest part of this whole box, and it looks like a main step-down transformer. There's also a power cord. A pigtail cord right here. There's a bag of components here. I'm not going to open that right here. I'm not in my lab, so I don't want anything to be damaged or lost. But there's some nice components there. And there's instructions. So this kit is an adjustable dual power supply kit. You can read that there. And the instructions are printed out on nice paper, easy to read. And in the instructions, there's the PCB here. High quality PCB. Everything should hold together well on it. Nice plating here. All the holes are drilled nicely here. And it's a pretty nice board. High quality. So, there you go. That's what was in the box. All came in this nice box here from Club Jameco, currently. So... First, we're going to look over our directions and set everything off to the side for now, just so that nothing gets lost. Try to keep track of everything. So, you're going to need a few tools to build this project. Um, the first one is definitely you're going to need a soldering iron. I have, I have a soldering station here. This makes soldering and kit building quite easy and a lot less frustrating, but these can be quite expensive. For a beginner, a simple soldering iron will work fine for your needs. So there's that. You're going to need wire strippers. Mine have, mine's adjustable, and there's also wire cutters built in. To cut the uh, little leads off of the PCB board, you're gonna want some nice side cutters like I have here. You're also going to need electrical tape. And you're going to probably need a screwdriver and some pliers. You may you may not have all these tools, but you can get them at Jameco if you don't. Okay, so we've got some rubber feet here. These will go on the bottom of the PCB to make sure it stays in place when it's set up on your bench. We also have a small bag of hardware for mounting everything on the board. So inside we've got a couple of potentiometers, two large capacitors, two small capacitors, three resistors, and then inside there's also a smaller bag. We're also going to cut this open. So there's two voltage regulators, and they should be different. They're adjustable. There's an LM317 and an LM337. One is for positive voltage, one is for negative. There are four 4001 diodes. And then there's also a small red LED here as a power indicator. So, I'm going to quickly double check on my instruction book here and make sure that all the parts are here. So, I've double checked and I've made sure that all of my parts have come in the packaging. I am not missing any, which is good. When soldering, don't cut off the part leads before you've soldered the joint. The part lead helps to draw away some of the heat from the soldering iron and not damage the part. And it also prevents the part from moving around when you're soldering. Your part should sit fairly flat to the board. Not a huge air gap or anything. And it shouldn't move around or anything. So, that diode is soldered incorrectly. When building a project like this, I like to solder all the small parts first. If you solder all the big parts, like this capacitor or the transformer, it makes it hard to get in there with all, and solder all the small parts. 
So I start from the small with the small things like the diodes and resistors, and then work my way up to large things such as capacitors and transformers. Next, it says to put the transformer in. And the wires are a little bit too long, so here's where our wire strippers come in. You have to be very careful with this though because you do not want to cut the wire too short. And now we're going to put the heat sink on. The heat sink prevents the chip from getting too hot. Make sure that you get them tight. If they're not tight, the chip could still overheat. And now we're just going to solder the voltage regulator itself in. We are not going to solder the heat sink. So this, like the diodes and the other capacitors, have a long leg and a short leg. And the short leg is negative, long leg is positive. The potentiometers included have bent leads like that, so we're going to straighten them out. Once we get these potentiometers soldered in place, we're going to put the power cord on. Now, as it sits currently, this is quite dangerous because if you touch one of these, you could get a pretty bad shock. So, what we're going to do is, to prevent getting shocked, I have some electrical tape here. Now we can put these rubber feet on here, and this will just prevent the prevent the power supply from sliding around. I added these labels with marker just to prevent any confusion when I'm hooking up wires. Now that your power supply is finished, you might be wondering, what can you do with it? Well, there's plenty of things you can do with it. First, we should probably test it. And the little red light comes on. It's saying 9.19 volts. And when I turn this potentiometer, it goes all the way up to 17, and it'll go all the way down to, where's it going to stop? 1.25 here, so let's try the negative. And we're getting negative 10 volts. Again, we can turn it and go down to negative 17, and all the way back up to negative 1.27 or so. So, this power supply definitely works. Let's try to power something with it. This is a gear motor that I got out of a DVD player. And as you can see, it starts spinning. This power supply can supply 175 milliamps at its lowest voltage setting, and up to 750 on its highest. You could also power a small fan with this. One thing that you can use this power supply for is powering op amp circuits such as this one. This non-inverting amplifier needs positive and negative voltage along with ground. So this project is nice because you can control each voltage level and get the voltages that you need to power your project. This kit took about 45 minutes to build and its rating as an intermediate kit is about right. It's a little bit more challenging than a simple through-hole kit like this one, but there's no SMD components or programming required to get this kit running. I would not recommend this as a first kit. It's a little bit too challenging, especially if you're new to soldering. But as a second or third, definitely recommend it. It's a very use usable kit. My overall impressions of this kit were good. I like that this kit wasn't so challenging that I became frustrated, it wasn't so easy that I became bored with it. It kept me interested throughout the project. I also like that this is a very usable project. Almost every electronics lab needs a power supply, and this one fits the bill perfectly. Overall, this kit has a great value. So the next step for this kit would be to put it into a nice enclosure. You would replace these binding posts, just these little bolts, you would replace them with real binding posts, and you would also replace these trim potentiometers with real potentiometers like this one. You can put a knob on it and you can just get more precise control with it. Also you would put a switch in line with this wire so that you, from the front you can tr control the voltage, you can have your outputs, and you can turn it on or off. So this is a kit from Club Jameco. If you're interested in more electronics kits, check out www.clubjameco.com they have all sorts of kits for all sorts of interests and skill levels. 
if you are just a simple beginner and you just want to make some LEDs flash, they've got kits for you. If you're advanced and you want to do programming and you want to program an 8x8 LED cube, they've got that kit for you. Overall, Club Jameco is awesome. They've got tons of kits and they've got a lot more on the way. So if you're a beginner all the way to a professional, if you're looking for an electronics kit, I would go to Club Jameco and see what you can find. You will not be disappointed.